desire and I long to worship you. I see as Parted for the water, so my son, parted that thing you alone, you alone as my love. My heart desire, desire.
Jesus this morning. I give him your glory this morning. Oh, that's me. Father, higher. I will lift him 
shall rise up. I'm surprised. Surprised some of you choristers that come to Bible study, you will come here and be saying that God is in three persons. God is triune. Three in one. Three in one. God is not in three persons. Three in one God. Triune God. Some of you don't, even if you come to Bible study, so you don't copy notes, you don't read. I shall be one God, one fold, one spirit. Amen, somebody. I say, man, somebody. Don't worry, we'll take care of that. How many of you know that you are created in God's image? If you know you're created in God's image, wave your right hand, wave your hand. This early morning, I prayed for our children, our grandchildren, our great, 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 great grandchildren. I prayed, prayed, and prayed. And um, ask me why I prayed. You know why I prayed? What the grandfathers in Africa did belittled man. Man was created in the image and the likeness and the likeness of God. Amen somebody. Man ought to serve God because God said let us let everything that has life Produce after their what? Their kind. Amen, somebody. You know what happened? Goat gave birth to what? To goat. Lion gave birth to what? To lion. Serpent gave birth to what? To serpent. Dragon gave birth to what? To dragon. And when he got to man, when he got to man, God spoke to himself. He said, let us make man in our what? Image. And what? And likeness. And God created man in his own what? Image. So, but how come instead of man to now worship God that created him in his own words, image. Man began to worship other images using the image of God that is above all, all images. There can never be a worship of idol except there is a fall. Man fell from that height, that position that God gave him. The man will see lion. Man began to make things. Began to make molting and graving images. Man created in God's image began to bow down to other words. Other images. What an aberration. Amen somebody. I say amen somebody. Our great grandfathers did not know this God. They were introduced to cause and they began to bow down to this cause until God in his infinite mercy came and gave us this revelation. And by the time God held Abraham, he brought him out. Because the father of Abraham, they were worshipping what? Idols. When he got a man, 
he got a family. From a family, he got a people. From a people, he got a nation. And I want us here this morning. If you know that God created you in the image and he has recovered you in Christ in the new man, I want you to consciously raise up your hand because I must tell you that if you trace our history, you discover that even before your father, our father came to begin to know God, their great grandfathers served other gods. And the problem of Africa today is the problem of these gods that man has so much fallen down to and to worship. And God Almighty has said, I will not share my glory with any other man. I said to myself this morning, not again, not in my generation. When God got Abraham, he got a man. From Abraham, he gave him a seed. Abraham taught his seed and directed, showed the seed the living God. Isaac showed Jacob the living God. In Jacob, God got a family. In, 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 the, in the sons of Jacob, God got a nation. And that nation became a nation of God. I want you to raise your hand up. If you still have, if, if there are gods, gods in families, yes, that your father served and God himself has separated you here from the cause that your father served. You need to thank God because God is beginning, is, God is going to use you to begin a new generation that will know the living God. You will not lack children that will serve the living God. Your children, children shall know the living God. God shall have a people through you. God shall have a nation through you. God shall have a generation of priests through you. Because there is an end to all generation and there is a new beginning in a new generation. The generation that will serve God. That will serve the living God. I want you to raise up your hand every covenant of the old cause every image of any idol in the past disturbing your present the people in your family they bow down to ignorantly because that was what they know this morning this hour if you understood what I just said you will banish that spirit you will consciously make a covenant with God that as he began with Abraham so he's beginning with somebody here and you shall have children that shall know the living God not the God not the God that your fathers knew in your children God shall have a family in your children, 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 God shall have a people. In your children, 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 God shall have a nation. A nation that he will call his own. A nation that will say, this is the nation of God. Raise up your hand if you understood what I'm saying. It always begins with one man. It starts with one man. A generation that will know God. A generation that will serve the living God. A generation that will not fail God. 
A generation that will not lack. A generation that will super rich. That will use their wealth and preach the man. Bring Christ into fall. A generation that will praise the living God. That God will begin to, God will start a family, start a family that will know the living God with somebody here this morning. As it began with Abraham. He did not begin it with Nahor. It did not begin it with terror. He separated Abraham and revealed himself to Abraham. And he said, I know Abraham that Abraham will teach his children. I don't know if anybody is asking the Lord to bless him or her with the fruit of the womb. God wants to begin a new generation. God has separated you for this purpose. God has separated you for this purpose to begin a new generation. A generation that will know the living God. A generation that will serve the living God. He wants to raise a people, he wants to raise a nation, he wants to give somebody a family. I want everybody in the house to raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. We will not serve the living God and our children will serve other gods. Let someone say, God forbid. Our children shall serve the living God. Their children shall know and serve the living God. Their children, children shall know and serve the living God. And as they grow, the earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. They shall become super rich. And they shall use their riches and expand the kingdom of God. And anywhere they go, they step their feet into men shall support them. They shall speak in high places. They shall minister to kings and kings with listing. They shall turn generations to God. And they shall serve the living God. Raise up your hand. Begin to pray. Pray for our children. Pray for our children. The problem that people have today is the problem of the cause that their father served. And God Himself went to begin. A new generation. That is why he got you separated from the cause that your father said. He wants to begin a new generation. Oh Jesus.
begin to wave your hand. Begin to wave your hand. Begin to wave your hand. From generation to generation, our children shall serve the living God. Our children shall know the only true God. Our children shall propagate the gospel of the living God. Oh, they shall not lack. They shall not lack. They shall be super rich. They shall preach to kingdoms that know no God and the kingdom shall repent. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I ask this morning that you send sons. Sons of that will turn out to become evangelists, prophets, apostles. That will shall know you. I lift up my hand this morning. Today, the seventh day, in the fourth month, in the year 2024, Lord, send the prophet, Jesus. Just wave your hand, wave your hand. Send the generation, send, send an evangelist that will turn their generation to the Lord. <sighs> Jesus. Jesus. Lord, send apostles in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, speak again to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to turn our Bible books to this anointed service. The book of Psalm, Psalm 23. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. We are in the month of April and um, the theme of this month is lift up your heads, O ye gaze, and be ye lifted up that the King of glory shall come in. And who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord of battle, in battle, he is the king of glory. I said to the brethren this early morning that from the sixth hour when Jesus was crucified, there was thick darkness. There was what? Thick darkness. And the darkness ran from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. And Jesus said, as long as I remain on earth, I am the light of the world. By the time he handed over his spirit into his father's hand. Darkness took over. And that was the beginning of a new creation. You cannot have the resurrection morning 
without passing through the night of yesterday. Am I communicating here? You cannot have a morning without the night. Because there was night, hence the morning did what came. From the sixth hour, that number six is the number of man. When he gave up the ghost, that was the beginning of a new creation. The new creation and the new man. Amen, somebody. And by the time darkness came in that three, that three hours, and the Bible, you know what the Bible said? A day, a thousand years, is like a what? A day before the Lord. In the spirit realm, time is not a factor. For good three hours, the light was withdrawn. The sun, the sun, nothing happened. Everywhere, thick darkness, it was returned. But God was walking. God was what? Walking. And Jesus went to the land of the dead went to the kingdoms. The power of the devil, the devil himself that had the keys. In the wilderness, he did not collect the key from the devil. The devil only asked him for worship. Am I communicating? He did not take the key. But he now went to the kingdom of Satan where Satan resides. And said, those that died in hope, I have come to show myself to them. And every gate that was locked, he commanded that the gates be what? Be lifted up. I perceive two families shall have a son. Two families shall have a son. Two families, two families. If you have been praying for the fruit of the womb, you're here this morning. Mark to this date, 7 You shall have a son. I said, You shall have a son. And that son is coming with a mandate. It is not going to be an ordinary son. God is sending a prophet. God is sending an evangelist. God is sending apostles. That before 11, before 11 years of this son, you begin to see the use of God upon this child. God separated you from your family and he began a new generation and is sending sons to two families here and those sons will become men of God and they shall raise up other sons. Your family will become a family of people that know the living God. If you're in the house, shout a bigger amen. amen. Shout another big amen. amen. You shall not have ordinary child. The child coming is a child from the bosom of the Lord. It's coming with a mandate. It's coming with authority. If you're in the house, shout a bigger amen. amen. Shout another big amen. amen. So what are we saying? When he got to that tomb, that place, he said, lift ye, O ye gates, be ye what? Lifted up. Gates, not gates. That the king of glory shall come in. 
Satan is a defeated foe. What he does today is to resist. He resisted and said, who is the king of glory? The Lord introduced himself. Not because he didn't know, but he needed to what? Introduce what? Himself. I want to tell us this morning, stop praying that prayer. Lord, let not my enemy ask me, where are you? It that means you don't know where your God is. Am I communicating here? If your enemies will ask you where is your what? Your God. Show them where your God was. Your God is. It's only somebody who does not know where his God is. That the enemy will say, ah, Lord, don't let my enemy ask me where is my, my... When they ask you where is your God, show them where your God what? Your God is. Am I communicating? Except you don't know where he is. Even the prophets of Baal did not know where their God, their God went to. He failed them. But Elijah said, call on your God. Probably he did what? He traveled. Oh, probably you have not done enough sacrifice. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Cut yourself. What did they do? They cut themselves. Yet, no response. Elijah and I said, now repair the altar because I know where my God is. And after I had repaired the altar and fixed everything up, he went to where his God was. His God is. He didn't look down. He looked up. He said, not because of me, but let these people know, let the whole nation know that there is a God in heaven. The most powerful God. Answer me by fire that these ones may know. Am I communicating? Before you know it, where Elijah's God, where he knows his God, he called his God, did his God not answer? When they ask you where is your God, tell them where your God is. Show them where your God is. If they like, let them try him. If they try him, he will show up. Amen, somebody. And whatever way he wants to show up, he will show up. Tell somebody, my God will always show up. So stop praying that prayer and stop singing that God in three persons. God is a triune God. But I want to teach this morning and get us to the point of anointing service. Go to the book of Psalm. I said Psalm 23. We're not only going to read Psalm 23, A and B, we're going to read down. Amen, somebody the Lord is my word, shepherd. I shall not want. If you look at that I there, it means that the writer of this psalm personalized it. He didn't say we. He said what? I. And for him to have used the word I, it means that he had seen himself as a sheep in the sheepfold. Because you cannot have a shepherd that has no sheep. You cannot have a sheep without the sheep being in the sheepfold. But this morning, the shepherd we are talking about this morning is the good shepherd. Am I communicating? Is the what? Is the good shepherd. The thing that, that makes him that good shepherd is because he's not a hireling. He would prefer to give his life for the life of his world, of his sheep. That's what makes him good. But there's no shepherd today that wants to die so that his cattle will live. No, I've not seen that. No shepherd does that. The thing that separate, that made Jesus the good shepherd is because he gave his life for his shepherd to walk, for his sheep to walk, to live. And a sheep that must be in the sheepfold must hear his voice. And any sheep that hear his voice will follow him. And when you follow him, he will bring you to that place where the land is green. In the banquet house. 
where has set the table? It meant somebody. I say, man, somebody. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me. He cannot lead you without asking you to follow him. And he, he said, he that followed me shall not fall into the ditch. And because I heard him, because I know his voice, I know my shepherd. If you don't know your shepherd, you'll follow a stranger. And I pray this morning you will not follow strangers. I pray for you this morning, the ears of your understanding, the eyes of your understanding, God will give you the ears to hear his, the voice of your good shepherd. Many are no longer having that spirit of discernment to hear when the spirit of the living God is speaking through men of God today. Charlatans are everywhere. Amen, somebody. Verse 3. He restored my soul. He led me to the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He said, yeah, do. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, listen. When a man walks through the valley of the shadow of death, and the good shepherd is life himself, Death cannot have power over you. Am I communicating? Because he that you are following is life. Is greater than death. So when one passes through the shadow of death, death cannot have power over you because he that you are following is life himself. And because he lives, you shall live in Jesus' name. So whatever be the power, the shadow of death around you, change your mind this morning, you will not die. You shall not die. You shall live and praise the Lord. If you're in the house, shout a bigger amen. amen. No, that amen is too small. Shout a big amen. amen. Verse 5 is where I want to concentrate. And teach this morning. Go to verse 5. Yes. He said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In the preparest a table before me. In the presence of my enemy. It means that the good shepherd has brought you to that book according to Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. Project it so that we can read. You yeah, project it. Because any man who is a sheep will hear the voice of the shepherd. If somebody is in the house here, you want to change your car, I decree this morning, you will not sell that car, but God will give you money to change that, not to change the car, to buy another car. <laughs> you have it this morning. Yeah. Say you have it this morning. Yeah. Go bring the car key. Bring the old one, bring the one you're using, bring it. I said, you will not sell the one you're driving now to add another one. There's a lifting up in the house. He brought me to the banqueting house because you follow the good shepherd. Am I communicating? Because you did what? You follow the good shepherd when you heard his what? His voice. And now he brought you to the banqueting house. And that banqueting house, when you get into that banqueting house, the banner over us is what? It's love. But before you get to that particular place, see, you must get to the table first before you start eating what is what? On the table. But many have gotten to their table and not know that what is on their table 
is bread and no scorpion. Some go to their tables and saw scorpion there and abandoned the table and their cup did not run over. I'll show you how. I'll show you how. Amen, somebody. Shout a big amen. Yeah. Shout another big amen. Yeah. Good. There is something I want to show us in the house. Go to the book of Chronicles chapter number 20. Because those that have a mindset of preaching prosperity, they have used the Lord as my shepherd as a basis, and they have even overthought prosperity using the word that, that book. Like I said, the book of, if you go to the same book of uh, Psalm chapter 22, verse, verse 2, David equally said, the Lord is my rock. Am I communicating? The same David that said, the Lord is my shepherd, is the same David that said, the Lord, the Lord is my what? Is my rock. It is the same David that said, the Lord, the Lord is my strength. It is the, the same David that said, the Lord is my what? Fortress. Why, uh, why have we left the Lord is my fortress, the Lord is my rock, the Lord is my strong tower, the Lord is my rock, and have concentrated on where? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Because man today talks about food, belly, bread. But there is a bigger picture. There's a bigger picture. And that bigger picture is what I want to teach you this morning. I want us to look at it this morning. Because a lot of people have abandoned their table and their cup did not run over. You will not abandon your table. If the Lord has brought you to your table, all you need to do is see what is on the table there and take it. I'll show you something. I'll show you how cup runs over. I'll show you how tables are pre prepared before you in the presence of your enemies. You know it. Probably you don't know it. Um, you have been reading it. You've been taking, interpreting it somehow, somehow. But there's a revelation there. There is something that St. Paul talked about, wrote about in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Before we go to 2 Chronicles, go to that 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Because we left verse 16 and we concentrated on 17. But look at verse 16. I want us to look at verse 16. And I want us to read together. Read together. Second Corinthians 5, 16. 1, 2, 3. Read. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the world, the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after what? The flesh. Ye now, henceforth, know him no more. So, there's a difference between the Christ known in the flesh. Am I communicating here? Yes, sir. There's a difference between knowing Christ in the flesh and knowing Christ in the resurrection. Knowing Christ by, the, by revelation. He said, listen, the one that will benefit you more is not the one you know by what? By the flesh, by the arm of flesh. You study the Bible, you give this Bible your literal meaning. No, no, not that. It's that Christ you know by revelation that benefits you. And he said, henceforth we should not know any man by what? By flesh. Now in that verse 17, now said what? If any, therefore, if any man what? In the new what? 
in the new man. He is a what? A new creation. Old things are what? I pass away. But don't forget what he said, the preceding verse. He said, henceforth, no will, no man after the what? After the flesh. No will, no man after the flesh. For flesh and blood cannot reveal, give you revelation. The literal meaning of the scriptures cannot bring you into the mind, into the revelation of God. So I want to show you, I want to show, show us how tables have been prepared. Tables have been prepared. You have been brought into your banquet house. Yes, you abandoned the table, you abandoned the house, you ran away. And when you ran away, you forfeited. Because you lack that deeper revelation, understanding of the workings of God. So let's go to Chronicles chapter number 20. You know the place. You have been reading it. Chronicles 20. I'll be, I'll be reading from verse 1. And it came to pass, Second Chronicles. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, listen now, that God has given you bread and you call, you call it a, a scorpion or a serpent. No. There's a bread on the table to be eaten. There's a cup. There's a cup to run over. But you must get to that table first. You must eat the table before you drink from the cup. That the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against the whole shepherd to what? To battle. And there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, where are they? Which is where? Engedi. That was where they were. Am I communicating? And Jehoshaphat feared. And set himself to seek the Lord. And proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. See, there is a fear at times. That will lead you to go and pray. Not the fear that takes your faith away. Am I communicating? Not the fear that takes your faith what? Away. There is a fear that there is no man of God today. No matter is level wherever he is. At what point, given point in time, he will not look at a certain situation of a brother or a sister and fear will not see, catch him. Fear, oh, let death not take this brother. Am I communicating? You could even see, you could even see that death is just so close. Fear will come to you. But you know, after you, you've gotten that fear, you know what will happen? You go back to him that has life. Am I communicating? You go back to him that has the key of death and what? And life. And you will now use prayer and cancel what? And cancel that death. So the fear that leads you to pray is not the fear that destroys you. Is the fear that challenges your what, your faith in who? In God. But the fear that stops you from praying, the fear that stops you from studying your word, studying the word of God, that is the fear from the devil that wants to destroy faith. But God has not given us the spirit of what? Of fear. So Jehoshaphat had feared. But his fear led him to pray. His fear led him to seek help. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah. 
And they came to seek who? To seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem. And in the house of the Lord before the new court. And said, O Lord God of our fathers. I made a statement here this early morning. That when you come to prayers, it is always good for you to form the base of your prayer to what God had done before. Am I communicating? To what God has what had done before. Make reference to it. What God had done in the past. Because there is no situation that any brother, any sister, any man is passing through today that somebody somewhere had not passed through in the scriptures and God came through for him or her. Is it long years of um, not having issue? God came through for Abraham. God came through for Hannah. Is same God. Am I communicating? Is what? Is the same God. It has not changed. Is it cancer that didn't die? Is it the blind eyes that were not open? At times I laugh at times while praying. Jesus asked the father of a child that um, had the spirit of death and what? And dumb. So death means the child cannot hear. Am I correct? Dumb means the child cannot what? Speak. But yet Jesus spoke. The, 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 the deaf spirit heard him. <laughs> He said, thou deaf and dumb spirit, get out of him. Am I communicating? But when you speak ordinary words, the devil will take, hey, 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 hey. He it does not what? It doesn't hear. But when Jesus spoke the spiritual word, this language, the deaf spirit, the deaf spirit, the, the deaf, you know what the deaf spirit, the deaf spirit makes men not to hear and talk, not as if they don't hear. Spirit spoke to what? To spirit. He said, thou deaf and dumb spirit, do what? Get out. It that means the deaf spirit equally heard the voice of who? So what can he not do? How come the deaf and dumb spirit heard Jesus? But if every other man will speak to that deaf spirit, hey, 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 hey. That is why when you speak to your rock, your rock will give you water. Tell somebody, say something good. Shout a bigger amen if you're here. If you're still here, shout a bigger amen. amen. You must, all the, that is why you must study your scriptures. Don't study your scriptures to go out there and make arguments. Study to know, study to show yourself what? Approve. Because it is from the deposit of the word of God that you have that the Holy Spirit will, will, will take from you and make you who he wants you to be. That's the reason why when you stand up to pray and you don't have enough deposit, you gas out immediately. No, you gas out because you don't have enough deposit. You don't, you don't just have what to say. Before you know it, you start plabbing, you start plabbing, you start plabbing, you start repeating. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Say Lord, say Lord once. Thou add this, thou add this. Make reference. But you can only make reference to what you know. And that is why the book of John 8, I say, Thou shalt know the world, the truth. And the truth you know shall make you world free. Truth is what happens to you. Look at the prayers of Jehoshaphat. He made reference to what God had done. O Lord God of our fathers, and not thou God in heaven, it that means he knows where he was, his God is. So if they ask you where is your God, tell them that your God is where? In heaven. And is the Lord God in heaven, on earth, and where? Under the earth. That is with you, and is what? Is in me. If you, take, if you just say that he's in heaven, that means he's not around you, he's not with you. He's with me always. He's with me. He's 
at a man that prayed out of the knowledge of the God he knows. Please go to that, uh, that verse before this one. Now, verse 4. Go to verse 4. Go to verse 5. Go to 6. O Lord God of our fathers, brethren, there is no blessing no blessing that was it in, in any family than the blessing of having children that knows God. When God called Abraham, he didn't call Abraham and said, I am the God of your fathers. Because the father of Abraham never served the living God. But by the time God got to Isaac, God appeared unto Isaac and said to Isaac, I am the God of your father Abraham. The covenant I have with Isaac, I with Abraham, is upon you. And because of Abraham, your father, I will bless you. We need to covenant our children to know the law, the living God, the living God. That God at one point in the scripture and said, I know Abraham, Abraham, my friend, that he will teach his children. He will teach his children to know me and to follow me. Look at Jehoshaphat and said, I don't know the God of our fathers. Most people in Africa cannot pray this prayer because the God of their fathers is not the living God. My children, my children, children, our children, children, this living God will appear to them and tell them I am the God of your fathers. Because we will let them know this is the only way. This is the only true way. This is the living God. Serve him. You will find rest. And the Lord will tell them. Because of your father that I separated. And I covenanted for blessing I will bless you. And for this purpose I have appeared unto you. That you shall be a preacher to your generations. Not only because of you, but because of your father. So I pray for parents this morning here. What responsibility you owe to God? If this living God is a God that you know and we serve here, make sure your children know the living world, the living God. If there is any inheritance you will leave for them, the best inheritance, the best thing, the best life you can live, live for them is who? Let them know what? The living God. Look at the Elshaphat here say, Are thou not the God of our what? Of our fathers. It means that their fathers have introduced them to who? To this God. I lived uh, one place that time those days. This man has a chemist shop, a medicine store. Do you know what he do? He, he loves drinking. And he has just one child. And that child and my son, in between them is six months. But do you know what this, man, this young man would do? Weekends, the young man will just come, sit down. He will open this black, black um, alcohol. I don't want to call the name here. I don't advertise this nonsense here. He will open it. He will put it inside the tumbler. 
He will say, son of, he will call his name there. Mwabanko, Mwabanko. A boy of less than 10 years. The father began to introduce him into drinking what? Beer, alcohol. It is not quite long, very intense. It's not quite long the man died. And when the man died, the boy became a thorn on the mother's flesh. A boy so intelligent in everything began to transfer his intelligence to doing the wrong world, the wrong things. If the father had known the living God, he would have introduced that God to what? To his son. I pray God recovers that boy. Because the last communication I had with my son, I don't know how he got to link him. He described himself, described himself. And my son remembered him. But what was he doing? If alcohol was no longer enough for him, he would go into drugs. Who introduced him to that? So parents, I beg of you, I'm not saying you shouldn't drink your wine. I'm not saying you shouldn't drink your whatsoever. Do not introduce your children to what? Drinking. Introduce them to who? To God. Because children, they learn by observation. And if you give them half a tumbler, it will put them to sleep. If they drink, they have a tumbler next time, it will not put them to sleep. Their body has gotten used over to it. So you increase it to what? To a full tumbler. Then over time, the full tumbler will no longer have effect what? on them. It goes to what? To bottle. Now the next thing is, anywhere they go for occasion, you see them, they begin to post on the number of how many bottles uh, they drink. A little living, living at what? The whole of. Parents, I beg of you, Drink your own. Leave this children world out of it. I beg of you. Amen, somebody. O oh Lord God of our fathers, are that not God in heaven? It means that they don't have any other God anywhere, but the God in where? In heaven. And rulest not thou over all the world, the kingdoms of the hidden. And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to what? To withstand thee. Verse 7. Are that not our God? Who did this drive out the inhabitants of this land before the people of Israel? And gave us it to the seed of Abraham. Abraham, thy what? Thy friend. Brother, when you pray, take God. Tell God what he had done. It's the same God of yesterday. The same God what? Today. This man have not made his request. He was forming, the, he was building the foundation of his what? Of his prayers. Bringing God into the situation. And they dwell that. And I built thee a sanctuary daring for thy name. Saying. He, he wants to quote um, uh, Solomon. When Solomon dedicated the world. The temple. It means that the man was not ignorant of the world. Of the scriptures. If when evil cometh upon us as a sword, judgment or pestilence or famine will stand before this house in thy presence. For thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou wilt hear and do what and hear. Verse 10 now says, And now, and now what? He has entered his what? His request. Behold the children of who? Ammon. And what? And what? Whom thou wouldest not let Israel what? Invade. When they came out of the land of where? But they turned from them and destroyed what? Them not. Eleven. 
Behold, I say how they reward us. To come and cast out all out of thy possession which thou hast given us the word to inherit. I owe our God. Will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company because it is not by might, neither is it why, by power, but by the spirit of what? Of God. That, that comment against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are what? On thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord. And their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then, upon the Hazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of... Ma See, a prophet must have a history. Camera fan nothing. Let's know when you started prophesying. Because some, net, some, some, some people that prophesying to their fathers were native doctors. You can see the history of this prophet here. His name is what? Jehaziel. There are other Jehaziel in Judah there. But this one is specific. Jehaziel, the son of who? Zechariah. Now Zechariah, the son of who? Yeah. Benaiah, the son of who? Yeah. And Jehaziel, the son of who? A what? A Levi. It means he's, he was from the Levitical what? family. So he's genuine. Of the sons of what? Came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the world, the congregation. Amen, somebody. I say, Amen, somebody. And he said, How can ye, all Judah, and ye what? Inhabitants of Jerusalem. And thou, King Jehoshaphat, thou said the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor be dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is what? It's not yours. But who? Of the Lord. The Lord is preparing a what? A table. You will see where he prepared the table. Am I communicating? He said tomorrow you must go where I have prepared that table. In the midst of your enemies. Who are the enemies here? Moab. Ammon. And what? And Sears. Are we here now? Are you here now? Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come by the cliff of what? So where did they, where has God set the table? The cliff of where? And you shall do what? Find them at the end of the world, brook, before the wilderness of where? That's somebody said, the Lord has set the table. In the presence of your enemies. Who are the enemies? The Moabites. Am I correct? In this context. The, 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 the sons of Seir and the what? And the Ammonites. The table was what? Was set. But you need not to be afraid. When God sets the table, it means he has guaranteed you victory. But you must get to sit on that table. And to sit on that table is, is when sitting is a position of rest. He said, enter into his rest. Because he said, this fight is not your fight. Amen, somebody. I said, amen, somebody. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand this still and see the salvation of the Lord. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not. Nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord will what? Will be with you. And Jerusalem bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping who? The Lord. And the Levites and of the children of the Kohathites and of the Kohai stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with, with a loud voice, where? On high. Good. And they rose early in the morning and went forth. Because the table is what? And went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. 
And as they went through, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his word is prophet. So shall you what? Prosper. If you want, if you want to say, believe his genuine word, prophets. Because some fake prophets have used it to extort money from people. Am I communicating here? Yes. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. That they should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord. For his mercy endure to what? Forever. Mm. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Amor, Moab and Messiah, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Amor and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Messiah, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they have made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy what? One another. 20. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, <laughs> oh God of heaven, you know when, when the anointed speak, when they began to sing and began to move in the power of the anointing, in the power of the word of God, God set ambushment. They were moving towards where God has set the table. Don't forget, he said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my what? Of my enemies. So as they began to sing and they began to move towards where the table is what is set, God was already walking. Am I communicating? God was what? Was walking to bring his word, word to pass. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and behold, they were what? The, the cup is about to, to what? Overflow what? The cup runneth what? Eh? The cup of victory. Runneth what? They were dead bodies falling to the earth. And none what? Now go to verse 9. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in what? In abundance. Both what? Riches. With what? Which one did they take? And precious what? Which they did what? They strip up. You see, when you stay on the table with your fork and knife, you don't eat the bones together now. What do you do? You do what? You eat the valuable ones, isn't it? If you have dogs, you remain the other one for what? For dogs. So when they got, they, God set the table and God put them, put the food on the table. So the only thing they need to do is take their fork. The Ghanaians will call it fake. Eh? So either take your fork or take your what? Your fake. Then uh, your, what do the Ghanaians call knife? Nif or whatsoever. You understand? And do what? Separate and eat the flesh. So when they got to the table, what did they find? They found what? Riches and what? And that. So what did they do? They stripped the dead bodies of the what? Of the precious things. They found among them in upon the riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they did what? Strip up for themselves. For they, more than what? I don't know if you understand. More than what they could what? And they were three days. They were what? Three days. So it means that even the, the smell, the stench of dead bodies, the, it's not a deterrent. Am I communicating? This one is not to bury the dead, though. But to take that which the Lord has what? Has given to them. But you must first of all come to the world, to the table. And when you get to the table and you see the, the purpose why God has brought you to the table that he has defeated your enemies. Do you know what, Ness? 
your cup will not just be full. Your cup will what? Will run over. Tell somebody your cup run it over. Shout it. Say your cup run it over. But you must come to the table. When you get to the table, separate the bone and the flesh. Take the flesh. Keep packing the flesh. When you are finished eating the flesh, you need to drink. And when you drink, as you drink, you drop your cup, God will fill it. Because as they packed and came back, their cup became empty. They went back again. God did what? God filled it. They emptied it. They went back again. See, if they still had store remaining, they would have gone the fourth day. But in three days, they were what? They were packing it. And the dead bodies were smelling there, but the dead body and the gold, they were busy what? Taking the what? The gold. Am I separating? Am I saying something here? And David said, Thou anointed my head with what? With oil. There is no anointing that comes upon you that you will not act. When the anointing came by the word of the Lord, they began to sing. And when they put the song in battle, God went ahead. No man has anointing on his head that his action will not provoke heaven. Thou anointed my head with what? With oil. And my cup does what? By reason of what the anointing did. The cup runs over by reason of what you have done with your what? With your anointing. Shall we rise up this morning? Let's rise up this morning. Do you know in the book of Numbers, the Lord asked 12 elders, go and spy out the land. I have given the land to you. The table was set. All they needed to do was eat what is on the table. He brought them to the place where the table was set. But those that came to the table, they saw giant. They got to the table, they ran away. But those that have another spirit, that have the anointing, that have the spirit of God. On the table, they saw bread. They saw bread. Two of them. Let not your heart be troubled. God has given us these people. These giants you see, they are like what? Bread. So what God puts on the table of believers today is what? Is bread. And Jesus said, who is that father? That the son will ask bread. And they will give him what? Scorpion. God has given many of us bread and we timed it to be what? To be scorpion, we ran away. You shall eat whatever that the Lord has. See, any, when anything the Lord put on the table, it means that he has granted you victory. So let it not be that the, the only thing you talk about when you talk about bread coming to the table is about putting money. No. You must have victory. Complete victory over Every aspect of your life, complete victory, deliverance, prosperity, open door, health, life, long life in the name of Jesus. That is complete deliverance. That is to be complete in him. So I want us to rise up. Rise up. Oh God of heaven. You know what Jehoshaphat said? The, the, the brethren in Judah then did not know any other God but the God in where? The God in heaven. And they began to sing for his mercies endured for what? Forever. Amen, somebody. And this morning, this morning, I, would, I, I just sat down and I, after my prayers, I began to say, oh, Anytime we come here, we begin to say, your children are saying, Lord, you are worthy. You, you, you will see how that moves God. Children that are begotten by the Spirit of God. Children that have God as their father that look up to God and say, Abba what? 
above fire. No other place. Jehoshaphat did not look right, did not look clear, did not look for. He lifted up his eyes to seek what? To seek help. He's lifted up his eyes. And the Lord told them what to do. Have you ever seen where people are going to war? They are dancing. They are dancing. They are sinking. That is why I tell you today, we don't war. We fight from victory. They were dancing because they know that victory was already what? Assured. That the table is what? Is set. The banquet is set. Your children are saying, Lord, you are The church is saying, Lord, you are The pastors are saying, Lord, Lord, you are The ministers are saying, Lord, you are worthy. The sisters are saying, Lord, the brothers are saying, Lord, you are worthy, oh Lord. The children are saying, Lord, you are worthy. The sisters are saying, Lord. Sisters are saying, Lord, Lord, the brothers are saying, Lord, sisters are saying, Lord, the children are saying.
the anointing service will take um, a different form this morning. You do not need to come out here. All you need to do is to be in worship. We will come to you. Amen, somebody. We will come what? To you. You need not what? Fight. You need not come. The battle is of the Lord. I will carry the oil and bring to you and anoint you one after the other. But you must be in the mood. Amen, somebody. You must be in worship. You must be celebrating the victory. Yes, I, yes, I, yes, I know he lives. I've got a witness in my heart that he lives. Standing on the right side, looking up above. And I know, and I know that he lives. Yes, I know. 